Today, I felt like running it back and watching an old school K1 Max fight. Now, the one we're watching today is Bokao versus Kozo. Kozo was a very accomplished Japanese kickboxer who was incredible at low kicks. Just so much power, like a baseball bat just clubbing into people's thighs. Now, while he never won the Japanese K1 Max tournament, he came very close. He had some very good battles with Masato. And this fight with Bokao that we're going to watch today was right after Bokao won his first K1 Max title in 2004. He demolished everybody in the eight-man tournament and then came back, I believe it was in October or November of the same year, to fight Kozo. So let's jump right into this fight, starting with the face-off. These guys are just at the peak of their career. Just it's both of them so good. And it was very interesting because Bokao had just demolished Masato. Masato, I would say, is a better fighter than Kozo. But as I remember it, this was a very, very good fight. And Bokao does not run away with that. And what was most interesting to me is we have Bokao. They're starting off the round right now. Bokao with the body round kicks. So spectacular versus Kozo with the amazing low kicks. Just a very good matchup. Who's the better kicker? Neither of these guys' hands are exceptional, but their kicks are so good that they can get away with not having the best hands in the division. Starting off already 25 seconds in, I don't think a technique has been thrown yet. A lot of respect between these two guys. Look at the crowd that K1 Max was able to bring in. Just packed. Aggressive hand combo there from Kozo to start. And Bokao just taking his time, throwing techniques out. It looks like, like a quarter speed. Just getting a feel for it. Nice front kick up to the face. Jeez. It's so incredible that Bokao can get that kick off with no skip. He's so flexible and just so balanced and, and lengthy with that, that he's able to toss it up and it's very dangerous. Not many people can do that. Very, very impressive. Back to sort of a chill pace. Pukau trying the same technique. In my experience, trying the same technique twice in a row is very rarely successful. Nice low kick. We're already halfway through the round and Bukau definitely has the edge on the scorecards just with that low kick and that front kick up to the face, both of which landed. I don't think Kozo has landed an effective technique yet. They're just still a very cerebral start to a fight, especially when it's only three rounds. But as I remember it, this one picks up and we really see some good exchanges between the kicks. Nice little catch, counter low kick, glove touch. Such gentlemen in there trying to knock each other out, but still just showing that they're sportsmen. Bokao trying to get that low kick off, but it's hard against Kozo. He's good at throwing them, throwing his own low kicks, but he's also very effective at checking them. That's usually the case in my experience. If somebody's good at throwing low kicks, they're very hard to land against. Bokao with a nice body round kick there. Only 30 seconds left and I definitely have Bokao edging out this round so far. I don't know how you could see it any other way. Good front kick, looked a tad low maybe, below the short line. Nice counter cross from Kozo. Good catch, counter cross again. Look at that power. He kicked so hard that he actually moved Bukau's leg. Bukau had to rebalance. We didn't really get to see Kozo's full kick power on display in that round because he was a slow starter. In terms of scoring, if I had to give a round either way because that was very close and could be argued as a draw, but I had Bukau taking it with that lovely front kick there, a couple body round kicks, and that low kick which he landed. That was, that was nice. It's hard to get a good catch on Bukau. That was a nice flush round kick up to the lat there. Very nice. But I think Kozo had his own good punch. Uh, that was, if that was the one I was thinking, that actually just went off the shoulder. 
So yeah, definitely a Bokal round. It'll be interesting to see if they pick the pace up a little bit more in round two, because that was a pretty darn chill first round. Bacow tapping a little bit faster with that leg. Looks like he's bringing just a little bit of pressure, trying to back Kozo up to the ring ropes. Using that knee lift to the jab, which he does so frequently. That's a hard low kick, but that was a good check. This is a fight where we're watching and appreciating the, almost like a chess match. This is a chess match. They're not trying to knock each other out in the same sense where people usually get a little frantic. This is just two guys who have a lot of respect for one another and are both high level technicians. This is so far maybe a little tiny edge for Kozo in this round. Nice body round kick there from Bukau though. I'll tell you one thing, as I score these verbally and then, or sorry, uh, commentate verbally and then try and score, I understand why we have judges who are just strictly there without talking because it's hard. Sometimes I phase out while I'm talking and I go, oh, my judgment on the scoring is not going to be as perfect as it should be. Uh, there's that low kick that we'll see Kozo probably throw many more times in this fight. Good check. Not many guys get that check off against Bokau. Bokau starting to let that left leg go, his signature kick, there it goes again. We'll probably see Kozo start to counter that. Nice low kick. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen Kozo throw that counter low kick, he's usually so good at that. Somebody punches and right away he's crashing that shin into the thigh. Oh! That was a cheeky sweep. Nice little glove touch again. So much respect. I love it. I love fight sports where there's lots of respect. There's that low kick which I was talking about. That's what I would like to see people do when they fight high level Thai guys. Whenever the kick goes, you throw your counter attack. You have it ingrained in your head throughout training camp that when that left round kick comes, you step to your left to minimize the impact and you throw your own low kick back. Easier said than done against somebody with Bukau's speed because he gets that left round kick off so fast. He's lighting them up now with that left round kick. Ooh, very nice fake from Kozo. He faked that low kick, which again, he's known for, and then came over top with that cross. This is definitely a close round. 10 seconds left. I love how it's almost Kozo's back low kick versus Bukau, his lead leg round kick to the body. You have two techniques that are so similar coming on the same side. I found in my opinion that very often when two guys, like I had a buddy, he used to always like to throw inside lows and I was throwing my back leg round kick and there was just lots of clashing of limbs. It's just something that happens but because these guys are going at different heights, it won't happen, but it's very interesting to see the chess match between them with these two signature techniques that they have. That one was, I would say once again to me, a Bokau round, but that was a nice fake there but I don't know if it was enough to take the round. Bakao had those nice left round kicks in the middle where he just showed a little bit more domination to me. These are hard rounds to score in terms of damage. Obviously there's no knockdown, so that would be the first criteria. Damage wise, there's not so much damage yet, so it's hard to score that, so it's more about techniques landed. After that would come ring control and aggressiveness. But I think with Techniques Landed, Bukau probably snuck that round out as well. He's just so good at getting that left round kick off, whether he's being the aggressor like that or whether he's doing it defensively. There's that counter low kick from Kozo. I'd like to see him fire those counters off a little bit more frequently to get himself back into this fight. Once Bokao gets going like that, he's a hard guy to slow down. Low kick, low kick, punch to body round kick. He's getting a little bit more 
a little bit more energy now it looks like. Hands are bopping up and down faster. This is the kind of match that I was hoping for right from the beginning. They're really throwing down now. Kozo must have pretty good balance, a good understanding of the Thai clinch because he hasn't been thrown yet. And that typically does not happen when you fight Bokao. He usually throws guys to the ground, but I believe Kozo had experience in Muay Thai. You know, he fought with elbows. He does a good job of basing out. Oh, lovely. The Bokao double round kick. And he just did that, what I said before. He stepped off to the left and he took the leg out. He wouldn't have taken it out if Bokao didn't double up. But that's a great technique to utilize. Kozo starting to let that cross go a little bit more. It's hard to find Bokao's head. He, he, he's decent with head movement. Not so much that he sees the punch and then moves. He just happens to move his head quite a bit when he's punching or when he sees somebody throw a punch at him. Surprising for a TIE fighter. There's that good counter low kick again. And once again, I feel like he's starting to get a little bit better range, Kozo. Starting to understand the timing. Ultimately right now though, I have him down. Ooh, Kozo gets the throw on Bakao. Yeah, I have Kozo down at this point, losing the first two rounds. They were very close though, very close rounds. I like these type of fights, personally, more than ones where there's a dominant uh, fighter. Ones that are more of a chess match where I can really study the technique, study the counters, and both guys are so high level that you're not really just, you know, having things get thrown and not have a technique behind them or a lot of thought. And that was a good, good little sweep attempt there from Bokao. Things are heating up by <laughs> the end of the fight. Although a little spoiler alert, I, I think the fight might go a little bit beyond this. It's not the actual last round here. Ooh, nice, nice punches from Kozo. I love how every time, look at this, the respect between these guys. I would assume that if I was scoring that fight and it was up to me that I would be giving it to Bokao just based on the fact that his techniques landed was a little bit more than Kozo's. But, you know, as I've said before, this is in Japan. Uh, we don't always see uh, fair judging. It's unfortunate, but it's just something that happens with out-of-town fighters. I love how Bukau can double up on that round kick, but even more impressive was that counter low kick right there. That was nice. I'm glad they, sh they showed the slow motion replay of that. Neither guy had massive success with punches in this fight, but as I said early on, it's kind of Bukau's left round kick versus Kozo's right low kick. That's, that's just the nature of, of this fight, when you have two guys who are so well known for their signature techniques. As I said, we gave a little spoiler before. Yes, they scored a draw. So we're going to an extra round. Extra rounds are, as I said, in Japan, far more frequent than they should be. Um, especially they always seem to favor the Japanese fighters in my experience. It's not usually the foreign fighters getting the benefit of the extra round. But I, I feel for the fighters, they get paid for three rounds. Well, I guess they get paid to fight, but really they're there for three rounds. They should win and then they have to do an extra. It's a lot of work putting in the extra round. A lot of guys might be like, yeah, it's not a big deal. But, you know, the, the, the damage all adds up. It's, it's cumulative. Let's see if Bacau can put a exclamation mark on this round. That was a nice cross to round kick from Kozo there, but equally, ooh, good cross from Kozo. Bacau off balancing, going for the round kick. I have a lot of respect for guys who can off balance and throw a kick before the guy regains his balance. That takes a lot of speed. The pace is more frantic now. Bacau wants to, wants to make sure he gets this fight. He's the current K1 Max champion. He can't have somebody snatching it away from him. Oh yeah, he's definitely coming with some more aggression. But that was a good start from Kozo to the round. 
Kyle letting that left hook go a little more frequently now. As he does, he always drops his chin to protect his head. He's very good about not leaving his head exposed. Kozo doing a good job of maintaining the distance. But Kyle saved from a takedown there. It would have been a sloppy, illegal takedown, but was saved by the ropes. I think what the Japanese judges want to see when you're in Japan fighting a local fighter is they want to see you really earn that. You're not going to get a win if you don't, or uh, an easy win if you don't really dominate. You got to get in there and dominate the fighters, which is unfortunate, but Bakao's doing a decent job right now. Kozo started the round off very well, but Bakao's come back and, in my opinion, taken over. Not by a lot, but he's up by little. Good knee to the body there. Look at that balance from Kozo. He's man, he able to get, he's able to get that takedown. It wasn't a pretty takedown, possibly again illegal because I think his hands went behind the knees. More of an MMA takedown, but still to be able to off balance Bokao and execute that amazing counter low kick there. That's pretty super, superb work considering Bukau had just won the, the title. Number one in the world. I'd like to see Kozo just be a little bit more aggressive. Every time Bukau kicks, throw that counter. I think he might have gone down to the calf there. Now he's starting to let those low kicks go. You really can't let Bukau get in rhythm with those kicks. As soon as he kicks, you've got to counter hands or feet. It probably won't stop him. There we go, nice work. Probably won't stop Bokao from throwing more kicks. Um, whereas a lot of people I say, if you can break their rhythm or take away their best technique after you know making them pay a couple times, they might not throw it anymore. I don't think that would happen with Bokao. He'll keep throwing. But it's still a good idea to really counter his best technique over and over. So that was the end of round number four, extra round. Harder rounds to score because both guys are being very, very cautious in their own ways. And nobody's really going for a big KO. Like I said, chess match. After that one, I would again say that Bokao got the edge if I had to pick somebody. Kozo had some nice moments, but Bokao did a good job coming back through the, I would say, the last two minutes and 30 seconds. He did not dominate by any means, but I'd say that was his round. It's always hard to score too. I mean, are we scoring the middle round kicks off the arms? If you're not scoring them, then it's it's definitely it's definitely harder to decide who who gets that round. But I always do score them. As long as the guy doesn't get countered. If you throw the round kick, the guy blocks it and counters with a punch, I'm going to give that exchange to the guy who throws the punch. Assuming it lands. Let's see here if they gave Bokal the nod. Slow going decision. Man, both these guys are just ripped in the stomach. I'd be interested. Oh, look at that. We got another draw. Now, just so you know, in K1 Max, two draws. Sorry, not two draws. Yeah, two draws. One draw after the first three, and then an additional draw in the extra round is allowed. When we get to round number five, the judges have to choose. They have to have a winner after this. There's no round six. This is as far as the three round fight can possibly go. So we're essentially just doing a title fight here, which in my opinion, with Bakao being the K1 Max champion, you could have made this a five round fight, but, but that's what made K1 so unique. There was only one champion per year, and if you wanted to be the K1 Max champion, you had to win that eight man tournament. If Kozo beat Bakao, in this fight, he does not become K1 Max champion. So yeah, when you only have one winner per year, it, it, it's very, very important. Real status symbol to be a K1 Max champion. Look at this fast exchanges here to start off the kicks. Bacow hucking that left round kick. That was a nice high kick. Kozo just had that hand high enough. Oh. Wow, 
He just walks straight into a jab. That was something we don't normally see from Bokao, and Kozo's not an easy guy to knock down, so maybe he's fatigued slightly. Bokao coming hard now. Ah, there we go. Bokao given a good representation now of who he really is. Letting those kicks go, getting those throws. Kozo not going, not going away though. Good head movement on that one with the counter shot. See, when Bacow throws that left hook, that chin is just tucked down. He gets it off the center line. Very effective way to stay safe. Another spectacular throw from Bacow. I know I've said it before on this channel, but I really wish they had not taken away throws in kickboxing. I think it adds an exciting element to the sport. Oh, that, was, that looked like that left hook, which we were just talking about. Bokao throws the left hook. He drops his head off to the side. He gets his head off that center line, so it's very hard to counter him. And if your head is there, you're getting smashed. Got a minute left. Kozo has two knockdowns. Now currently he is down 10-7 for this round on the scorecard. So he has to knock Bokao out to win. Look at that. Look at that throw. Yeah, I love how they're not giving Bokao warnings for trying to throw either. Good jab. Kozo has not been as successful with his low kick as he normally is, but Bokao is taking them really well. I think that's one of the differences. A lot of times when Kozo kicks people, they start to crumble under the power of his kick. But Bokao is not fading. You can tell the conditioning to his lead leg is pretty superb. It's always something to keep in mind, always something which I talk about, low kick conditioning. I do have videos talking in more detail about it, so I will link those up above. You can check them out in about 20 seconds after this fight is done. Kind of a foregone conclusion here that Bokao is the winner. Oh, nice cross though. Koso's still in there, he's not just giving up. And there we have it. Hard five rounds, close fight, like a chess match. And it's just fun, guys, to go back and watch these fights, which helped me become the athlete I am today. I'm not kidding you. I credit watching these fights to probably at least half the reason that my skill built up. Yes, I had good coaches. Yes, I trained very hard. But, you know, we didn't have internet the way that you guys do now, where, you know, you're able to go on like, oh, how to throw a round kick, uh, how to throw a cartwheel kick, oh, uh, and, you know, all this research. Basically, my training research was watching these fights and breaking things down in my mind. So going back, re-watching them just shows how important they are to me. And hopefully you guys appreciate being able to watch these along with me and you can take little notes and hopefully add things to your arsenal or have a better understanding of the sport in general. Guys, if you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. If you haven't already joined the channel, get subscribed. Train hard, guys. I'll see you back here soon for another video.